This is the Marketing Intern Spotlight, where we are committed to unlock how every marketing intern has an innate ability to be an entrepreneur, motivator, and influencer. Welcome back to the Back Pocket Podcast, Steve Harrell. Thank you for having me. It's good to be back. It's been a while. Retired or still current? Yep. First ring producer. What would you what would you what would you title him as, Deck? It's up in the air. Yeah. It's up in the air for sure. I think he's still eligible to be first string producer. But we as our marketing interns knew from podcast one, Steve H. Harrell was our first string producer. And he uh he faded for a little bit. And uh But he's always in our hearts. He, always. He's always a part of the back pocket. But yeah, I think that's a great way to uh to introduce Steve. It's one of our great friends, one of our great teammates. And when we first started this podcast a year and a half ago, roughly, Steve was our producer. And so that's why we have to injure you. And so welcome here, man, Steve. How you Thanks. doing? Yeah, I'd say a good way to describe it is just a little hiatus. Uh, mm. Mm. You know, we've had some we've had some things, that, you know, you guys moving. We're farther away. Exactly. Uh, we don't see each other as much. So I think it's, we're figuring out how to adjust. I think that that's what we're going to be in doing for the next few, few weeks here. What I kind of want to touch on right away is, the early stages of doing the podcast, like, what did you think of? You were sitting in there for because we were recording three hour long podcasts to start, and I was editing, chopping them down. Like the first one, we were in there for so long. Remember the quiz we played and stuff like that? Oh yeah, it was hilarious. But I'm like, from your perspective, what was like? Were you just like, what am I doing here? Or, or, or I'm just curious. I'm kind of like, what was your mindset during that? The mindset was kind of, all right, my role is. Minimum. I mean, <laughs> I, I think it turned and turned into that. It was just kind of like, okay, uh, I really don't know why I'm here. So it turned into, uh, again, you know, I wasn't all into it. That's where my heart was. I just wasn't into it. What all was, in. But what was funny, like as a producer, like they do the editing on the garage, like they do mm-hmm. all the other stuff. Really, we just had you in there to like make sure that the, the, the so, laptop didn't die. Like I don't, I don't even know. Like. <laughs> Like the producer part of your title was, it was not a, a appropriate title to have. I'd say you were more of just like the guy that was ready to help when conversation was lulled. Yeah, and and even then, uh, you guys already are always had your uh, the way that you were gonna direct a conversation or a, a topic. So it was kind of, <clears throat> it was even less that. It was more. I mean. I think the biggest thing was always just me sitting there listening, making sure that the heater wasn't on. Or something. <laughs> that was my biggest role. Uh, so, is that our fault for like not giving you a defined role right away, or were, did you did you like that you didn't have a role, and then you were like, okay, now I got to create opportunities type thing? Well, to be honest, I mean, I think in any time you know so you give someone responsibility, you delegate a task to someone. I think they step up. You feel a purpose. At, you know, I think that was. And just in general, I mean, that's where my, you know, it was a lack of really a role. It was a really a lack of doubt, not to say that that was a failure on your ends, but that, I mean, that's just, you know, it was young. It was, I mean, there was no defined way of how you guys were going to do this, how we were going to do this. So, mm-hmm. I mean, just the kind of way it ended up, I mean, in no like ill-mannered way, but it was just, it was the way it was. So that's a great transition to um, kind of something I wanted to touch on real quick was you've been one of the uh, the closest people to this podcast since day one. Absolutely. Since its birth. If not the closest. If, yeah, if not the closest. And I think we need to talk about that a little bit. Just a quick reflection on your end on what on the growth that you've seen of the podcast and then how it's kind of taken a part in your life. Yeah, well, I mean, I think the going back backtracking to what you talked about in terms of you know, you do this, you do three hours of like recording and then chop it down. Like the hours that you spent, I think you guys have become way more effective in time. Like you're using your time way more effectively. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think that's a non-negotiable. Um, that's the biggest part of growth. I think in general, I mean, not only the fact that the snowball is gone. I mean, that's, yeah. you know, like that's, and that's why when going back to my role, it's like we were <laughs> worrying about sound with this thing. <laughs> it's just like, that was the biggest thing. But, um, <laughs> it just captures everything. Yeah. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. But, and I think the, really one of the largest aspects was for you to, I think with school, with job searching at the time, there was just a lot of other things taking away from the podcast. Um, whether it be relationships, whether it be, again, jobs, searching. Uh, so 
coming together now that you guys are actually living together um, now that it's kind of a more you know work come home podcast you know no homework kind of deal mm-hmm. um, I mean that's again allowed you for a great am- amount of opportunity to, to build and grow um, the commitment has obviously skyrocketed because of all that so mm-hmm. it's I mean you guys are loving the process it's nothing about what um, I think there's minimum talk about where you really want to get this in terms of like rather than focusing you guys know where you are right now that's where you're focusing on that's what you enjoy to do there's no you know it's not we're we're, we're in this for something you're, you're in this simply for to be in it and then you know that something's going to come from it mm-hmm. right on i appreciate that and i, I really i going back to you being the first drink producer i was I don't know if you remember, but I texted you after Deck and I did this the first time. Like we recorded ourselves, just Deck and I, and it was, it wasn't very good. Like I listened to it, and I was like, I don't know what we're gonna take from this. Mm-hmm. But honestly, I don't know if it was having another person in the room or like someone overseeing us, and or if it was just having you in the room in particular. We definitely there was a different feel after the first time we recorded versus the first time you were in the building, and I truly appreciated you like making time for us in the beginning, even though your role really wasn't that significant. Honestly, you probably don't know, you didn't have any like tangible things that you took into the, the role of the podcast, but the impact you had, I want to say it was real. It was something that you made mm-hmm. up, you, it felt more professional and it, it made us elevate our game, having another person in there and realizing like we need to start doing stuff on our own. Like we can't just put something on you to like have to figure it out because it was not that, large of something i don't know what i'm if you know what i'm trying to say declan like it wasn't like something that needed to be done we needed to have to figure the next thing out and we were trying to delegate things off and then we were figuring stuff that's i I think with broadly saying yeah yeah there was there was so much unknown in Mm -hmm. what we wanted to accomplish and what what was the what the goal was that it was hard to even delegate yeah if you think about like a producer now if we were to have a producer yeah we have we have action items for a a potential full-time producer you know Mm -hmm. that could be something easily to delegate but when you have no idea you know what was going on like what we were doing in the first couple weeks of the podcast it's hard to even do anything yeah Mm -hmm. and i just want to say thank you that was more of what what the that little spiel was thank you yeah Uh, but trapping the puck and getting more onto you because that's why you're here and we really appreciate you having uh, coming in you're the 12th marketing intern spotlight and these are something that we really cherish having these 30 minute conversations because we're talking to our listeners, talking to our marketing interns, and discovering how they perceive their role in their prof- in their profession and in their industry. And they all have those innate qualities of being an entrepreneur, a, motiv- a motivator, and an influencer. Um, so, to help our marketing interns a little bit, what are you up to now, postgraduate? Postgraduate, baby. Um, yeah, I mean, out in the real world, um, I think there's a stigma that being out in the real world is is sucks and i just want to shoot that down right away first thing off the bat because uh it's awesome i think um being out and having like you have a career now like having a career is something that you can work towards every single day that you wake up i find it so much easier to wake up in the morning and get out of bed um compared to really i mean going to class i mean that's just reality that's just not the person i am um that's not where my eggs are so you and i shared major so we were in class every day together Mm -hmm. the past three semesters i'd say almost every single class we were together so we know i, I we know yeah. how we work in class exactly and you needed to graduate so, you were ready for it i needed to graduate so <laughs> now that i graduated um i'm out as in a account managing position which covers sales uh, and consulting uh, for a nutraceutical company which is a natural um, medicine company called way laboratories so uh, it's been an awesome opportunity i've loved every second of it loved every second of having to um, wake up and go to work and uh, having a role i mean my role as in the company is really, you know, we call you yeah, say to yourself, you're kind of your own CEO um, in the way of you have your accounts, you grow them. Your your I mean your your business does as well as you put into it, uh, the work that you put into it, and uh, I think that's the coolest thing. I mean, <clears throat> going into what really makes um, what I feel makes me successful is I mean hyper competitive and sales and uh, competitive nature in sales is almost it's it you need it you need it um it's non-negotiable um because i mean there's again there's qualities that i know that i pulled i know we we uh, allude to the football program quite Mm -hmm. a quite a bit and um yeah just traits that you get from that from hard work uh work ethic um 
you know, the wo no woe is me, just get to the grindstone and work. Um, also my parents, I mean, the, the fortune that I've had for amazing parents to instill a work ethic in me has been um, a true blessing. So yeah, that, I mean, that's what I've been up to, uh, grinding, trying to build my career, uh, loving every second of it. Mm. I think you, one thing you mentioned early on was the, the real world and how like it doesn't suck and it's perceived as this like bigger thing that everyone makes out to be like that's scary and Andrew and I had this conversation not too long ago about the real world and how it's really not there's no such thing as like the real world it's just your life and it's a different stage of your life and you know if you love school you know that's a great part of your life that you dominate but if you don't that doesn't mean your life's over that doesn't mean you can't succeed into the next thing that you do I think that's a great you're a great example of that because um, there's I mean there's so many people out there that don't like going to class and don't see a purpose in that but the second you give them like a task or some sort of thing to uh, manage sell etc they dominate and so you're crushing it right now i'm super stoked about that we got to get to your average quality though you know what what things are you struggling with nowadays what are where are you where what is your shortcoming right now um and how are you how are you conquering it what's your average quality steve yeah, uh, again, I'm going to go back to what we were talking about briefly before this, um, before the mics even got set and how, um, again, we started, you guys started this thing as a, we're wildly average um, and it has become into so much more of a, we have a lot of room to grow. Uh, we have a lot of opportunities in our lives and things in our lives that we can grow and build on and, and improve upon. And uh, so when I was thinking about that, uh, my patience is going to be something that comes to mind each and every time that I think about something that I need to work on and improve on. And I'm <clears throat> just not happy with where I'm at uh, in it. Um, the patience goes into so many aspects of my life, uh, whether it be I mean, watching the Packers today and just not being satisfied with where the Packers organization is at. Uh, whether it be, you know, I mean, even before when I you know, fishing and hunting, like I could never do that before with my patience, but I'm working on it. I enjoy fishing now. So that's, we're building, um, patience in reading. I know reading is something cause I can't, my patience is limited, um, in terms of, I'm not going to read a, a page that, you know, that, how much can I really get out of this one page? And it's going to take me two minutes. Uh, again, something I need to grow on. So a lot of patience, man, uh, goes in a lot of aspects i mean I, it also moves into an area of expectations i have a ridiculously high expectations for myself and when i know that those are set i have a difficult time being in the moment and so that's where patience comes into play uh I, well i just want to make note that you're crushing it with your patience right now and i think declan also mentioned this off air the calmingness in your voice like i get way too excited when it's my turn to talk and i struggle with like getting my point across because i'm just ready to talk so fast and I want to get to my point so quick but I, I don't know our marketing interns probably not all of them know you and that your pitch your tone right now is it's pretty cool and it's not all the time that friends can talk in this type of setting when it's just very casual and just talking about their core qualities mm -hmm. and I just really appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us right now yeah mm -hmm. yeah I thank you thank you very much and, and uh, I really appreciate it. I mean again I'm gonna look for in opportunity ways and you know, I knew this was something that my job is literally being on the phone for a good hours a day. Oh, so yeah. that has <laughs> improved it a lot. Eliminating filler words, just being comfortable on the phone. I mean, it's... And being patient with customers. It's a real skill. Mm -hmm. It is. It's a real skill. Um, and so communication skills was always something that I had a very difficult time with. I had, I stutter, I had a stuttering um, disability when I was younger. So I like went to speech class and everything. So... Communications was a part where I needed to grow a lot, and um, the St. Thomas football program, again, was something that built my communication. My role in FCA um, at school was something that uh, helped me grow my communication skills, and then this job is even something that's continuing to grow it. So, and Soothing. Cool. Soothing. Absolutely. Soothing. Mm -hmm. And oh. you just mentioned that, and I want to talk about you transitioning with St. Thomas football, being an absolute stud at St on St. Thomas football's program and then taking that to the a real world job um, your job now what were some of the things that you really took away from that program outside you already mentioned communications but I was curious if there was anything else with that mm -hmm. yeah, and I I like to revert to um, just sheer motivation and what 
I do why I do it. Um, there's there's a lot of people. I mean, sales is a, a very goal oriented thing. I mean, it's a numbers results oriented thing. And so, <clears throat> um, when thinking about that and and going to my now and my experience with the St. Thomas football program and really how to attain success, um, it's to really put in the forefront of work. Um, you know, we started out with certain accounts that. Yeah, and you have to spend time, you have to build certain things. And um, a lot of times our salesmen would say, you know, don't, don't just try and hit your sales goal this, for this month, this first month. Take time, build these accounts for the long term. And so that's really the biggest thing is you, um, in terms of success, everyone, it's, it's a common human nature to want instant gratification, instant success. Um, so again, going back to the patients and what is something that I really want to continue to work on. Um, and something that I know I'm, I'm working to improve every single day. And, and again, the war of attrition, uh, that's something from the St. Thomas football program, which, you know, I just want to wake up throughout the day, go to bed. And I, I just want to hit my head knowing that I got a little bit better in something, uh, whether that been, and I want to do it in all a bunch of aspects of my, in terms of, you know, being the best friend I can be being the best, um, you know, brother, son, just there's going to be a lot of aspects and that's i mean that's something that i took from cook crew so that's always going to run through my veins is just trying to get a little bit better each and every single day i think focusing on your process too is goes hand in hand with that and Mm -hmm. we had uh we had debated results versus process on this podcast uh what when was it that was a couple of podcasts uh 29 season 229 there you go and it was interesting because you know you can it can be a debate results versus process but really you got to have both of those mindsets within your own life and it's like for you you're in sales and it's very results oriented but you got to have a process of with that war of attrition trying to get better like every single day it's not easy doing that yeah it's crazy and i guess have have you had a lot of or felt any pushback or have you struggled at all with you know, kind of getting thrown into this sales position right away? Is there any times where things got tough? Well, yeah. I mean, to begin with everything, I mean, you're you're coming in and you're not going to be getting, your the accounts are lost, you know, ones that haven't ordered in months a lot of times. So it's, you're, you're, you're put into a position not really to succeed. Okay. That's just reality. Now, to counter that, you we are you know you have managers, you have meetings, you have trainings. There's a lot of things and a lot of re, um, resources to grow yourself, and that's the biggest thing um, that I know I see in myself is really asking questions. That's the biggest part of sales, and not only that, but also in terms of to grow, uh, asking questions to upper management, um, more veteran salespeople uh, in the office, always looking to get better. Um, I know there's um, there's there's people that will continue to just be satisfied with where they are and think that they're going to be able to get it done themselves. And I think there's a lot of humility that comes from that and and saying, Hey, you know, getting help is not something to, to be frowned upon. Um, Seeking help, especially when you're starting out with something or just when you say, dude, I, you know, I can't do this on my own. I mean, I've come to that a few times in my life where um, you just need some help. And uh, I think it's, it's a definitely characteristic that, will continue to propel me um, to succeed in life. I know there's a lot, I mean, just especially with friends, um, you know, we all have such different aspects. We all have such different um, blessings that we, that we have and, and attain. So seeking, seeking advice, seeking help from every, everyone that you possibly can. And that's encompasses a lot of what this, um, what the podcast has become. So mm-hmm. always being willing to learn and it's not easy necessarily to be, um, have that mindset of saying, oh, I don't know the answer and I, 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 I don't feel like I can get to that answer without help. And it's sometimes very difficult to ask for help. Um, what were some of the things that those veteran salespeople were saying? Because I know there's probably salespeople listening or just people that could use an attribute to have that kind of like, not a swagger, but something, it's a confidence almost when you're talking on the line with someone or in front of someone at, in a meeting and you need to be able to deliver a, a message what were some of those veteran um, advice qualities that they were passing along to you, mm-hmm. if you'd like to share? It's literally formulating questions. It's it's basically 
we always think in the common thought of, of when you think of a, a salesperson, you think of people that are, oh, you're born to be a salesperson. I, and I, that's completely false at this point that I've learned. Um, sales is literally 20% you listen, 80% they should be talking, um, which is completely the other way around of what I thought. You know, when you p- think of someone, oh, they have a, a great sales pitch. It's them, just them talking the entire time. Mm-hmm. But the biggest thing is simply finding out you, that you're problem solving. That's what sales really is. Because you have a solution. You have to find what problem there is to, to answer that with the, uh, with the solution that you can provide. So it's, it's continuing to listen and ask questions. I know it's, that, it's so simpl- that sounds so simplistic and it's a simplistic way to put it, but that's just the reality of what it really is. And creating questions that are really good is actually, it's, it's very difficult. Uh, you have to ask the right questions because then you'll get the right answers. You, don't, you can ask a, a ton of questions, but you might not get the right answer because it wasn't the right question. So that's kind of the biggest thing is, is continuing to build a bank, uh, a question bank in your head of you know, how can you really dig into someone's brain and make them realize that they have a problem. <laughs> so. And they probably do. I mean, it's a, it seems like an authentic approach because... A lot of the times, you know, you can have that question bank, but you don't build that question bank unless you listen. Mm-hmm. And listening is so important. And I did not realize how important it was until we really started diving in on this podcast and understanding um, the best conversations, the best product we put out was not from Andrew and I doing hours and hours and hours of research. Like that stuff is helpful, but being in the present moment and actually listening was, was what actually made that product golden mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and, and it, it goes back to your point listening to the point and we don't necessarily are trying to find a problem but we're trying to find that right response mm-hmm. so we want to spark a, we want to ask a question that sparks kind of like a, a way and a, and a mindset for our, our interviewees to go down that route that we're kind of pushing them towards but we have to figure out what the right questions are and i'm so happy you said that because that's something like you don't necessarily you said it's simplistic but not a lot of people are aware of how simplistic that is mm-hmm. and how not easy but just you can anyone can do that it's mm-hmm. it's something everyone's capable of doing it's mm-hmm. listening and asking questions to uncover something and the start of this what it was like minute eight or something and i was talking and i really was like what was i trying to get at and i should have been coming back to you like what you sparked something really cool in my head but i lost it while i was talking i was <laughs> i lacked the listening and i just want to recognize that i apologize because i wanted to say the impact that you had on us early on was much more than you actually thought. Mm-hmm. And I, that was what the majority of my point that I wanted to get across was the impact that you and Mark and Greg and all the other people that had surrounded us in the very beginning was incredible. Like I cannot thank you guys enough yeah. for the positive support that you guys always gave us during times when we were just knuckleheads, just trying to do something fun. And then when we turned it into even more, we tried to continue to push forward like that whole time, that was my point I wanted to make at minute 10 was <laughs> your impact on this is much more than you actually think. And the shirts that we finally got, finally returning the favor of you helping us with the party that we threw that funded us for the next six months. Like you guys don't realize how important that party was for yeah. our success going down the future. And we promised you guys gear that we were going to eventually get. And it took us, it took us nine, eight months to get that back. But we never, every single day, we're like, how can we figure out how to get shirts to get these guys back yeah. to what they helped us get? Because thank you, Steve. <laughs> Honestly, dude, thank you. You're welcome. And it, of course, it's the least and it's the most expected thing. Um, mm. You know, again, with the, the quality of friends that we have and we are to each other, um, nothing more is expected of that, you know, than from us. Um, and, you know, we never knew, we never once doubted that you guys would do that for mm-hmm. us, you know, in, in return. So, um, and I, again, I, I want to go back to your point. I'm trying to think of again what it was. In ter- oh, okay. So when you think of the the impact that you have on people, you said, you know, I, I really didn't know the, the measure or even with Greg and Mark and the, and the measure that you really uh, have on the impact of people. And I think that's an important thing that a lot of people should take. And I know you guys, in terms of golden nuggets, I mean, that's really something that people should really take away because... Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I don't know, there's, there's other aspects I know, and even with, uh, the assignment in leadership management <clears throat> with asking people about leadership traits to, you know, so rather than friends and teammates and stuff. And 
people will say stuff and bring out stuff about you know your leadership that you just don't realize you never even thought was like a, a trait that was looked highly upon and it's all around you the impact that you leave on people is all around you um, whether you see it or not you probably won't um, there's gonna be rare times that people will be able to come up to you and just say wow you really impacted me um, but it is huge you have a lot of impact on each and every person that you um, come in contact with each and every day uh, the people that you work with, people that you spend the most amount of time with. So um, that's really something to treasure. It's crazy to even think about because, yeah, Andrew and I really, the only feedback we would get and we do, we get consistently is, you know, just a friend or one of you guys texting us saying like, hey, that was sick. I liked that interview. Or, you know, I really like what you guys did here. Or Andrew's dad always hitting us up about stuff. Like mm-hmm. those are the kind of the consistencies we get. But you're right. I mean, there there are for sure people out there that, just don't voice that to us and it's not their fault like they're not that's not their job to voice that stuff to us but it's really cool to hear you know like there is an impact on a greater scale that what we're doing that we don't necessarily see every day Mm -hmm. absolutely and it's every single person too like you mentioned like you're going to the bathroom at work and you stop for a second and you say hi to someone ask one question whether it's about work or not Mm -hmm. and their mood could be uplifted it could be stagnant but it could be uplifted later they could realize something you don't know, like just taking time out of your day. And that's an, that's a great golden nugget. The two golden nuggets right away that I took were asking questions, the 20% rule in sales. I mean, I'm not, a, we're not a sales guru or anything, but I will keep that in my back pocket forever. 20% listening or 20% speaking, 80% listening. It's so important. And it's, a, and it's involved in every attribute you do, not just sales. Mm-hmm. I think sales is also like, like you said, like learning how to have a conversation and it's sales is involved in everything you do you know i don't care if you're an engineer like we're podcasters we have to sell our product and our belief our brand to other people so that they could follow us or Mm -hmm. give us a listen that's one piece of advice that we got and i'm sorry to interrupt you but it was um we were told to sell ourselves like people buy from people and has that been kind of the mantra that you've seen the successful trail like when you get on a call or you are in front of another person and you um, have that personality, that approachable relatability personality. It's easier to close on a deal rather than talking about products and like the actual credibility of your brand. Has that been translated into way products, or not necessarily? Because it's it's a strange, it's, it's a different industry. It's tough. I mean, yeah. So I mean, this is inside. So with inside sales, being over the phone, it's a lot different um, than when you're outside and actually personable with someone. Mm-hmm. Uh, relationship selling is definitely a lot more apparent in outside sales of course you're person to person chances are you're gonna be going out to you know get a bite to eat with them and so you want you're gonna buy from someone that you like right i mean that's just a reality Mm -hmm. someone that you're more close with uh so but and that's the biggest thing Uh, i know for me i'm a relationship type oriented type guy uh, on the phone Uh, i like to build relationship with each person you know when again really learning about someone's situation and and caring and being empathetic for people that you know the people that I deal with are always their last resort patients that come to us with chronic issues that you know four or five months from now they might not be here I mean that and that's just like it's a it's an interesting very interesting position uh, that I did not really know that I would be in um, but yeah really selling your getting to know someone Again, if you're if you're on the phone call for 15 minutes and all you tried to do was was sell them on a product, I mean, you're not gonna unless this person just doesn't even care and they were gonna buy regardless. I mean, it's it's so tough. Um, relationships and sales is huge. I, I definitely say that. I, I can't wait to get not to outside outside sales one day um, because I am I am way more relationship oriented. Selling, yeah, selling a product again. It's there's there's never really selling a product. It's again solving a problem. Um, you're you're looking for someone that, again, um, whether it be someone that needs motivation, uh, needs something. What you know? What are you selling? You're selling them um, golden nuggets, information um, on how to improve yourself and get better each and every day. So, how do you figure out a way and a voice that someone maybe? You know, need something more. Uh, that you know, that's the difficult part of sales. It really is. It's an art that, again, no, again, no one is born with it. It's not an innate ability. You gotta learn it. You can get way better. You can take anyone that can 
uh, even if someone that stutters a lot, someone that doesn't really know how to uh, how hold a conversation, you can train them into a, a great salesperson by simply uh, training them how to ask the right questions and how to solve a problem in someone. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Love that, dude. Yep. That's so nuts. It's kind of crazy, too, because like the entrepreneurship standpoint that we attack it from, it's like you really do have to sell yourself because you know our platform and our brand and everything is all built from us you know like when someone hears the back pocket they think of Andrew and Declan Mm -hmm. and that's and that's why we have to sort of sell ourselves because our product is stuff that anybody can do anybody can start a podcast anyone can sell t-shirts anyone can have conversations but you know your commitment to the the production of all that and the message and all that stuff is what makes you who you are and it's cool to hear the other side of it too because like you you're going to people when I didn't even realize this like it last resort people like that you're you're like legit changing lives mm-hmm. with every sale which is super cool like that is a cool product to sell in my opinion mm-hmm. i wouldn't really want to be selling like paper or staplers <laughs> or like you know stuff that people could go and get what wherever knives <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a job. Yeah. It's a job. Yeah, you gotta learn how to sell those things. But you're you're selling something. Insurance. Insurance, insurance, dude. Let's we could go down the paper yeah. trail. Like there's so many things mm-hmm. that people sell that just are. I don't know. It's not as it's not as cool as what you're doing. Put it that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you saved me. I need a marketing <laughs> interns to know that. We had they know that because I've talked about it with every health per- person we've ca- that's come on the show. Can you cure me of my acid reflux? And uh, Steve did. And Steve did. He gave me uh, three products from Way, uh, and my acid reflux is gone. And no, wait, wait. Can we plug your company real quick? Because they're they're pretty freaking cool. Yeah. What's the name of it? Absolutely. Way Laboratories. W E I, not W H E Y, as in protein. I get that a lot. Mm-hmm. W E I. Laboratories. Way. Laboratories. Okay. Right on. I like that. In the show notes, you'll see it there. Mm hmm. Um, but kind of transitioning towards the last question because it looks like we're wrapping up on time here. This is a simple question. You know the drill, man. Every person gets asked this question. What did you learn today from the moment you woke up to when we're having this conversation today? And it can't be about the Packers. About the Packers. Unless it is. I learned, I'd say truly, how much um, I miss and how much I really have lost out on spending time with you guys in terms of the podcast. Um, this was, I mean, I'll, all I can think about right now is back in the twenty one eighteen. Yeah, Washington the room, 1. The Washington 0. Capital, dude. All, <laughs> that's all I can think about right now. From the moment it started, from the conversation that we had, like, uh, just in terms of like first recording yourselves, and then I remember getting the text later that night or something like that. It was, it was Andrew, and you know, hey, dude, we'd really love if you'd be our producer, and so that's what I learned how much I really missed you guys. I mean, it's, it's been awesome to just, it is, it's, it's an organic talk of conversation between friends. I mean, it's, again, it's something that even when we were talking about when, uh, like me, Greg and, and Maddie C were over at Nico's tacos and we didn't get our tacos for like 50 minutes. It was an awesome opportunity for us to just talk and, and learn, you know, learn about each other's lives again, just getting really, it's that quality times with friends, which is just so overlooked. I think, um, when with phones, um, with all, everything else in the world that's going on, uh, the ins- again, it could have been instant gratification. We were just wanting to get there, get our tacos, and leave. Um, but it's finding opportunity. Everything you, everything that you are presented with, and that's what this podcast has encompassed. Um, and so I learned how much I really missed it. Right on.